are there are multiple dimensions okay. uh, uh, when it comes to technology and the scaling the platform. And I'll give you a couple of dimensions and examples. Right. See, the first is uh, when you're trying to build a largest ecosystem of lenders, integrating every lender is, is in, and especially in the case of asset appraisal area, uh, it's very challenging. It takes almost a year to onboard a new lender. So Peak today has three lenders. It has taken two, three years to onboard these three lenders. It's not, it's not been easy. Now, why is that? Fundamentally, the lender integrations are complex when you don't have standard. So there is lack of standard in, in this area, right? Now, when you look at uh, uh, parallel to this uh, in payments world, payments was painful, right? Uh, when, when I was leading payments on Amazon, one of the uh, tasks that I was uh, given was, you know, how do you make it easy to onboard a new bank mm -hmm. uh, for net banking? Sure. Now, it's extremely hard, right? It used to take us multiple months. Mm -hmm. And what we did was two things. Uh, one is we partnered with NPCI and we contributed to a new protocol called UPI, which most of, pe most of people now know yeah. UPI, Google Pay, Phone Pay, everybody's on UPI now. And what UPI did was it standardized this entire net banking mm -hmm. transaction processing, right, at a protocol level. And what we're doing at Rupeek, we are currently working on Oaken, uh, Open Credit Enablement Network, which is another protocol being worked upon to standardize lending. So what we're trying to do, and we are the first ones who are investing in our protocol standardization when it comes to secure lending. So Oaken is currently focused on unsecure lending, but we are building with Icebert and with the banks uh, a new protocol for a secure asset back lending. If we standardize this protocol, and obviously, we can then integrate more, more, more lenders very quickly. Sure. But that's an outside story, right, from standardizing the protocol standpoint. Internally, we have to make sure that we abstract out all the complexities that lenders bring to us from our internal tech stack, right? So we're building a lot of atomic capabilities, which are very horizontal, and where the, you know, almost like there's a, a gateway layer in which we would build all the lender complexities so that the rest of the tech stack is decoupled from those lender-specific nuances, right? right? That's one example. Second is, if you look at the assets, see, uh, today I'm, I'm doing a gold appraisal. Gold appraisal is a, is a process where, you know, I have to send the customers to, uh, I mean, I have to send the agent to customer's home. And agent goes to customer's home, they appraise the gold and move it to the vault and come back. If you look at it, it's a simple point-to-point -point transport communication, right? When I look at real estate, when I want to onboard tomorrow real estate as an asset class, the appraisal of real estate is going to look very different. I may have to go to customer's land, visit the land, and not just with the customer, but I may have to get the bank professional. I may have to then go to the registration office for, you know, and look at the uh, records, past records. Yeah. Uh, now, when you look at this, it's a very complex workflow, right? When I look at my platform today, um, I have to build a very generic platform which can support different kind of uh, flows, appraisal flows, which can support different kind of concepts like trips, tasks, roles, where I can just make it very configurable and I can send any of my ground operations uh, and I can make them do multiple trips. So think of it as a what Dunzo has built. Dunzo has built a very generic platform where you can just run in any run. I mean, we have to build something like that in a, in a structured environment where we, we have multiple like large operation force and how do you mobilize them for different kind of use cases, right? That's the second kind of you know, example of uh, technology. Third, and this I'm very uh, uh, passionate about and I'll talk about it, and I'll start with the consumer insight. We thought that the gold loan is needed when people, uh, you know, have a need for large amount of money. Right. So I need a, you know, pay education loans. So I need a gold loan. What we did was uh, launch a new financial product called Rupee Quick. Okay. Rupee Quick works very differently from a term loan, standard gold loan product. So in standard gold loan product, what happens is you appraise your gold. And, and you get a loan of certain tenure, let's say three months or six months. So what you're expected to do is pay that loan back in a three to six months time frame, whatever the tenure is. And it works beautifully for many people. What we launched was a Rupee Quick product. In this, it's almost like a credit line product where you get the gold appraised, you store the gold with us, but your loan, the credit uh, cycle doesn't start yet. Till you start withdrawing the money. All right. right? Now, why, why, what's special about this is, you know, today I... I'm a customer. In some cases, I know that I need a loan. Some cases, I don't need. I don't know when I'm going to need money. So all I need is a credit, sure. credit product. Now, when we launched this Rupee Quick product, one of the very interesting things we found was that customers were using it to pay electricity bill payments, <laughs> two thousand rupees. 
it blew our mind. Uh, we, were, we thought, oh my God, this is like a, a very different kind of use case that we had never thought about. Sure. So what that meant was that there is a huge population out there who have a lot of assets, mm -hmm. and, but they don't have credit products, okay. right? So what we need to do is not just solve for the loan, for the term loan product, but what we need to build is a range of credit products. Whether it's a rupee quick, what we build, it's an overdraft product, or imagine having a customer who has a lot of gold, bank has denied the credit card, American Express, Citibank, no one is giving them credit card, we are giving them a card, right? And once you have this, we're gonna have the entire consumer side scale coming in. So, so far, you know, we've been solving, how do I give credit? But what is going to start happening is when consumers start, uh, you know, consuming this, we're going to start seeing uh, millions of transactions happening on our platform because suddenly customers will want, you know, to consume it and, and use this credit on big platforms like Amazon, Flipkart, or any online offline merchants and whatnot. So now we have to scale the platform to handle uh, this kind of scale, which we. Are